How you doing, everybody? Coming to you today with another episode of Police Stops. Today, I'm actually going to go into a question that I received regarding how can you sue a public official and because they have immunity. Now, I'm going to go into how their immunity is waived, and it's because they have an oath of office that they signed prior to being inducted into their office. Now, the first part of that is how their immunity is waived. I'm going to go with the first court case, and that's Dugan v. Rank, 372 U.S. 609, 621, 83, 1962. The doctrine of sovereign immunity raised by defendants is inapplicable since plaintiffs contend that the defendants' actions were beyond the scope of their authority or they were acting unconstitutionally. We all have been going over court cases. We understand the Supreme Court decisions are based on constitutional acts. We've already gone over how they are violated. One of those is a show of authority stop by telling you to come here, go over here, leave this, stay here. Any direction that they're giving that's not first set forth by probable cause is unconstitutional. So therefore, their immunity is waived because there is a breach of duty. The second part of that is we also understand that I've stated part of the USC codes where their immunity is waived. The immunity is waived via 15 USC 1122 because they must be able to do their duty without violating. I've seen it done. I live in a place where it is done without question. That is one of the things that all officers must do. Good cops do it, but you can also look at some of the training. But once it's done, it's done. And it's up to you as the one that's been violated to follow through. And this is why you're able to follow through because their immunity is waived federally via 15 U.S. 1122. One of the means in which they use to try to block the immunity clause that, we, that I just stated is the fact of the public duty doctrine. We've also discussed that in a previous court case. Now, here's where the trick is. It's understanding the application of everything that we're doing. Because the public duty doctrine provides that a government entity cannot be held liable for an individual plaintiff's injury resulting from a governmental officer's breach of duty owed to the general public rather than to the individual plaintiff. Long and short, what that means is you must sue them in their personal capacity in federal court. They have no immunity as an individual. So when you're going into court, if there was a breach by Officer Colin Johnson, you don't take Officer Johnson in the court. You take David Johnson in the court because David Johnson because he was acting outside of the reach of the duties as a police officer, he was no longer a police officer. Now I'm going to go with Owen v. City of Independence, 445 U.S. 622-1980. A municipality has no immunity from liability under Section 1983 flowing from its constitutional violations and may not assert the good faith of its officer as a defense to such liabilities. Officers of the court have no immunity when violating a constitutional right from liberty, for they are deemed to know the law. I think you've heard me say that before as well. They are deemed to know the law, so they are held at a higher standard. Now, understanding how to get through that immunity is understanding the fact that they have an oath of office. That oath of office is your contract. That contract with you is for your benefit. Now, if they breach their duty to benefit you, they have just violated and they must be held accountable because we're getting to a point to where they are forgetting that they are a public servant. Understanding the word of servant is one to serve. And if they are doing a disservice, just like we're having poor service at a restaurant, we're not gonna eat at a restaurant. So if we're having poor police service, we should do something about it. Just like we complain on Yelp about service at a restaurant, we need to complain to the proper people 
and take these officers to court and take everything they have if they do not want to honor the badge, period. Now, I'm going to leave you with this. You're also going to hear me say this again later because this is partially a court matter, but you need this type of understanding to know where we're going. Again, it was in the previous video. The Privileges or Immunities Clause is Amendment 14, Section 1, Clause 2 of the United States Constitution. It states, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Each citizen was given the same constitutional immunity from abridging acts of state government as each was already recognized to possess from abridgment by Congress. Your immunity to, from being stopped for no reason. If they don't have a call that stipulates a crime, there is no reason. Then it becomes a conversation versus being a stop. And if it becomes a stop instead of a conversation, they have just violated their duty. And you're going to hear stupid ass words like when you begin to assert your constitutional rights. Oh, are you a sovereign citizen? My response when an officer said that to me is you need to quit watching TV. They're also going to say things like, why are you being difficult? Or my favorite is, I need you to cooperate. Now, my response is, I'm not a police officer. I did not make a choice to become a police officer. I did not make the choice to go to an academy and get training to be a police officer. So why should I even worry about your feelings or your point of view? Because I was not concerned with it prior to you introducing yourself to me understand what their immunity is where it stops where it begins and where yours never ends until next time